we recently reviewed the $249 Dell PowerEdge T20 as a PC and as a Linux server, but what about Mac OS? How well does the T20 work as a Hackintosh? And can the T20 Hackintosh support four simultaneous displays operating at 4K UHD? Let's take a look. Step-by-step -step instructions for our build are linked in the video description below. We started by downloading macOS Sierra from the App Store and creating install media from a USB memory stick. Next we installed the Clover bootloader and added Clover Configurator to our memory stick. We configured the BIOS thanks to settings provided by hackintosh-forum.de forum user E60. We also used BIOS version A05 from Dell.com, which supports Sleepwake. Clover requires a computer-specific configuration. E60's Clover config files included config.plist, ssdt files, and dsdt.aml. We modified config.plist to add a serial number, to add trim support, and to fully disable system integrity protection. Finally, we added fakesmc.kx, which is the only driver we injected. Installing macOS required no special steps. After installation, we installed Clover and added the configs to the boot drive and installed the NVIDIA web driver. After installing macOS, the T20 was working well but still needed drivers for sound and networking. Hackintosh Forum DE user E60 provides non-Apple drivers, but we instead opted to add in natively supported hardware. For wired networking, we're using a Presto Gigabit PCIe Pro adapter. The T20's last PCIe slot is blocked by our GPU, and so we opted for a PCI to PCIe bridge, shown here. No additional drivers are needed for either the adapter or for the bridge. However, speed was limited to 700 to 800 megabits per second during our tests. For Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, we added a combo card using Apple native Broadcom hardware. The Broadcom works out of the box without any drivers or patching. The Broadcom supports AirDrop, Apple Watch logins, handoff, and Apple's Bluetooth keyboard, trackpad, and mouse. Using the Broadcom, Apple's keyboard even works in the BIOS before macOS boots. For graphics, the T20 supports two monitors at 1440p with the integrated GPU. Instead, we decided to add a half-length GTX 950 for quad 4K graphics. Maxwell-based cards are supported in macOS through NVIDIA's web driver. For power, the GTX 950 required supplemental power. We upgraded the T20's 290-watt power supply using a drop-in replacement from Dell. This 365-watt gold-certified power supply supports 6-pin PCIe power that the stock power supply lacked. For memory and storage, we use 16 gigabytes of ECC DDR3 memory and a Samsung 850 Pro SATA SSD. Finally, for sound, we used an $8 USB DAC from Sabrent. Putting it all together, the total price for our Quad 4K Hackintosh without displays was $800. We paired our hack with a planar quad monitor stand and four LG 27 UD68 4K displays. In terms of performance, the T20 is relatively small and is extremely quiet. Geekbench returns a single-core score of 3,778 and a multi-core score of 10,440. This makes the Hackintosh slightly faster, although very similar to the Windows 10 T20 we recently tested. So far, the T20 has been stable with minor problems. Wireless Bluetooth works with Apple's Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad. Apple Watch logins and iMessage both work. iCloud, Continuity, and AirDrop all work. Quad 4K video, USB, and sound all work. On the downside, wake from sleep and boot tend to hang the computer, and our Gigabyte Hackintosh doesn't exhibit either of those problems. And now for our conclusion. We own all manner of real Mac computers, and we're really looking forward to the modular 2018 Mac Pro. A Hackintosh doesn't offer the same simplicity or tightly integrated packaging as a real Mac. 
But there's something interesting about assembling a system from parts, as well as upgrading critical components over time. While building a Hackintosh certainly isn't for everyone, enthusiasts get the fun and savings from building the exact system they want. The Dell PowerEdge T20 offers a cheap, pre-built alternative to a traditional self-assembled Hackintosh. Unfortunately, because of the occasional wake and boot hangs, we can't recommend this as a Hackintosh, but if you already own it, the T20 makes an inexpensive, relatively fast, highly functional hack. Stay tuned for our next video coming soon, where we'll be building a Mac Mini home VPN server with multi-factor authentication. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe and leave comments below. Also consider getting subscribed to our new music channel, Geekster Robot. And so long, until next time.